welcome to day five on our 40-day journey through the Gospel of John. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of action movies. And unapologetically, I love the Jason Bourne movies. Matt Damon plays Jason Bourne in these films that are loosely based, and I mean really loosely based, on the old Jason Bourne novels. And my favorite scenes are in these movies is where Jason Bourne, almost by himself, as if he's been called from heaven above to carry out this mission, brings good to evil and justice to injustice. Evil and injustice is depicted in this fictional Jason Bourne universe as these big, dark, corrupt organizations that almost seem too big and too strong to be taken down. But that's why these movies are so great, because Jason Bourne takes them down. And my favorite scenes are the ones where he walks into the places where this evil resides and he just wipes it out. It's not too big of a stretch to go from a great scene in an action movie like that to our Bible reading for today. So if you have your Bibles, open them to John chapter 2. We are in verse 13 as we continue our tour through the Gospel of John over these 40 days. From the first chapter to the last chapter, we're covering the whole Gospel. This is the famous action story of the Gospels where Jesus walks in to the holy temple in Jerusalem, flips the tables, drives out the money changers, and shouts for the crowded temple to hear, stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. We know the temple is crowded, and that's not by accident on Jesus' part, because it's Passover. It's like a Christian church today on Christmas Eve or Easter. Overflow chairs and, uh, and rooms are packed just so that we can get a taste of, uh, of celebrating the central stories of our faith, Jesus' birth on Christmas and Jesus' resurrection at Easter. For Jesus and his disciples, remember they're Jewish. And like a lot of Jewish people living in the Middle Eastern first century culture, they make these religious pilgrimages to the holy temple in Jerusalem, which wasn't just another local synagogue. It was the central house of worship for God's people because it was the place where God resided. Inside the Ark of the Covenant, which of course is depicted in another great action movie from way back when, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark of the Covenant resided inside the most sacred room, this sanctuary called the Holy of Holies in the temple in Jerusalem. Outside of that holy room where only one priest was designated from one particular tribe to go into that room once a year. On behalf of all of God's people, the descendants of Abraham and Sarah, the, the Israelites, the Jewish people, on behalf of all of them, this priest from this tribe would go in and make a sacrifice for the atonement of the sins of Israel. This is sacred stuff. This inner sanctuary in, in the holy temple of, of Jerusalem. Outside of that inner sanctuary, there were other rooms. And the further you get out, the more public those rooms would, would, would become. And on the outer courts of this room, that's where the money changers were. That's where the people, the merchants were who were selling the animals for, for people to make an offering, who were making their religious pilgrimages, because this is where God promised to reside. He promised this in the central story of the Old Testament, the, the exodus from slavery to, to freedom, from, from God's people living in Egypt to their pilgrimage to new life in a promised land. Along the way, God says, I'll always be with you. I'll, I'll reside inside the ark, the ark of the covenant. And so then as God's people settle in this promised land, eventually they build a temple. Only the temple is ultimately destroyed. And so they have to rebuild the temple. And get this part, it takes 46 years for them to rebuild the temple. And the corrupt leaders of the temple in Jesus' day are very proud of it. They're also very comfortable with the power and control they have in this temple. The power and control to make more money than they should. You see, when Jesus says in John chapter 2, verse 16, after he flips the tables, after he drives out the money changers, stop turning my father's house into a marketplace, into a shopping mall. This is one of the places where well-meaning Bible readers often draw false conclusions. Let's make sure that you don't do the same thing. It helps to know some Old Testament prophecy. In other versions in the Gospels of the New Testament of the same story, in Matthew and Mark, Jesus says, my house, my father's house is a house of prayer. 
but you've turned it into a den of thieves. Remember those phrases as we dive into this Old Testament prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11, God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah hundreds of years before Jesus ever shows up in the temple on, on this Passover celebration. And he says this, God speaks to his people and he says, the day is coming when my house, my temple will turn into a den of thieves. <laughs> That's where Jesus got the phrase. And that's why Jesus is flipping the tables, because the corrupt leaders of the temple are no longer leading the temple as a house of prayer or as a house of worship. They're using it as a, as a place of power and control for themselves, as a, as a big moneymaker for themselves. So Jesus comes in, his heart is broken, he flips tables, he drives out the money changers, and he cleanses the temple. He wants nothing to do with it the way it is. He is this action hero who's marching in and going face to face with the big corrupt powers that exist in his world and he's taking them on and he's tearing them down. In fact, as we move to the end of the story, we get to the best part. That not just Jesus flipping tables and driving out the money changers for trying to make a dishonest profit by exchanging money. They said, your Roman currency isn't good here, so you have to exchange it, and we're going to take a huge, uh, corrupt, thief, thievery level of profit from you. Or, or the merchants who would sell doves or, or sheep or cattle to, to be made as sacrifices to God for the religious pilgrimages who would make their Passover pilgrimage and then would want to bring their atonement offering to God in the holy temple while they were there. It's like buying a Big Mac at an airport. They drive the prices up because where else are you going to go to eat? They've got you. You have to buy the offering there. So they just drove up the prices. That's corrupt, Jesus says. You can't treat my people that way. This should be a house of prayer. This should be a house of, of, of worship. Sell honest goods for an honest price. And Jesus has no problem with it. But do it in corrupt ways. Do it in ways just to hold on to your power and control. And Jesus is going to clean you out. <laughs> but then that leads to the conclusion of this story, which is the dialogue that Jesus has with the uh, temple leaders who are now obviously very offended. Who do you think you are? By what authority do you come in here to our temple, the temple that we run, the temple that we have power and control over? Who are you to come into our temple and flip our tables and drive out our money changers? Show us some sign that you have the authority to do this. And Jesus goes ahead and takes on their challenge. He says, I'll give you a sign, but it'll be a prophetic sign. It won't be today, but you'll see it. He says, tear this house down, this house where God resides in the Holy of Holies, and I'll rebuild it in three days. <laughs> he couldn't have come up with anything more offensive to say if he had thought about it for years. But he said it because it was the truth. Tear this house down and I'll rebuild it in three days. Of course, John's gospel goes on to explain he was talking about his body, about how he would be torn down. And since he is God in the flesh, God no longer just resides in the Holy of Holies inside the Ark of the Covenant. Here's the good news, the really good news for us today. God is with us now through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God. God is present with us. God is not bound to just one place and one holy temple in the holy city of Jerusalem, but God is on the loose. God is on the move, and God is with you, whatever you're up against today. What a good God we worship. Jesus wanted to make sure that we understood this, and so he said, actually, I'm the temple. Actually, I'm the presence of God. Actually, I'm the one that you should be following and worshiping. Tear me down. And three, three days later, Jesus prophesies, I will rise from the dead. This is the Jesus we follow. This is the adventure that he invites us to take with him. And it just keeps getting better. We'll see you tomorrow where, we'll where we will take a closer look at the most famous verse in the whole Bible. 
like, review, and share on whatever platform you're using that helps us get the word out. And join us for weekend worship. You can go to lutheranchurchofhope.org to find out how. We'll see you there. Bye.